Hey everybody and welcome back to another lecture with Coding with Roby. In this lecture, we're going to learn about for and while loops. So let's start by creating a new variable, my list, which is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now to print this to our terminal, we can print each index of this list. We save this file and we right click and run the application. We can see we get one, two, three, four, five because we're printing each index of my list. Now this is not a very good solution because we have to go through and manually type in every single index. Now there is a better solution and we can do this by using loops. Now loops have an iterator. And this iterator is an item that is going through every single data element of a list unless specified not to. We can do this by using a for loop. So we can say for iterator in my list print iterator. If we save this application and run it, we can see that we get the exact same print as if we went through every index. Now let's go through this for loop to see exactly what is going on. We're saying for, which specifies that we're about to do a for statement, and the for statement is used to iterate over the elements of a sequence, such as a string, a tuple, a list, or any other object that's iterable. And here we can even see an example, for i in range of 10, which means in 10 integers, print i, and then i equals 5. Now what we're doing here is we have the for statement. We can declare this variable whatever we want it to be. But in this example, we call it an iterator. So for iterator in my list, so for each element in my list, print the iterator. Now this iterator can be called whatever we want it. Typically it's an X, a Y, or and I. If we run the application now, we're going to get the exact same thing because now this variable is just x that's going to be iterating through every element. Now we can also say in a specific range, just like you saw in the for statement where we're talking about range is equal to 10. We can say in range of 3 comma 6, so we are no longer specifying my list. If we run the application now, we're going to get 3, 4, 5. That's because we start at the three element and end at the six element, so three, four, five. Now, let's show in another practical example of how we can use a for loop. Let's say we want to add up all these numbers, and we don't want to just go and manually go through every element. We can say sum of for loop is equal to zero. And now 4x in my list. And now we want to say sum of for loop plus equals x. And remember what this is going to do. This just means sum of for loop plus sum of for loop plus x. And now we want to print the sum of the for loop. And we don't want it inside the for loop because that's going to print it every single time. Where we really want this is outside of the for loop. If we run the application now, we're going to get 15 because x is going to be equal to each of these elements at one point. And for the sum of the for loop, we are just going to add x every single time. So it's going to start at 0, and then 1, and then 3, and then 6, 10, and then 15. Now you can also loop through strings. So let's erase all of this and let's create string values instead of number values. I'm just going to use the days of the week. And 
and now we can say 4x in my list print f string happy x which is going to print each day if we run the application we're going to get happy monday happy tuesday happy wednesday and happy thursday now this is an example of a for loop again a for loop you specify an iterator and you specify a list or a range of numbers a while loop operates slightly different. A while loop is going to continue looping through something until a condition is met. So let's start by saying i equals zero. We can say while i is less than five, i plus equal one print i. And now let's save this and run the application. We're going to get one, two, three, four, five. And how this is working is we have a variable i, which is equal to zero, while i, which is currently equal to zero, is less than five, i plus equal one, which means i is now equal to one, and then print i. And now i is equal to one. So while one is less than five, plus one to one, which is two, print two. While two is less than five, add one, print it. 3, while 3 is less than 5, add 1, print it, while 4 is less than 5, add 1, print it, and then we get 5, and 5 is not less than 5, so it stops the while loop. An issue with while loops is if this line of code is not present, the application will run forever and use up all your RAM and CPU on your machine, and who knows what could happen after that. And the reason being is this executes so fast. And if you don't have i ever changing, well then i less than 5 will be running forever because 0 will always be less than 5. Now what we can also say is learn about the continue statement. And a continue statement is a statement that you can type in that will skip the rest of the loop but start the loop back to where it should be next. So if i is equal to 3, continue. So if we save this application and run it, we're only going to get one, two, four, five. And that's because once i is three, if i is equal to three, continue, that means go back to the beginning of the loop and don't execute any more of the loop underneath. That's why every element is printed except for three. And also for while loops, you can also use an else statement for the first time the while loop fails. So right under while, we can say else, print i is now larger or equal to five. If we run the application, we can see one, two, four, five, i is now larger or equal to five because eventually the while loop failed, which called the else statement. Now we can also use a break statement. And what a break statement does is almost the exact opposite of a continue. A continue means don't execute the rest of the code, but go back to the loop, while break means stop the loop completely. So right under this, I'm gonna say if i equals four, break. We run the application now, we only get one, two, four, and the else statement doesn't happen, nor does the extra execution of the five doesn't happen. And that's because we break, which means exit out of the loop completely. For loops and while loops we use all the time when dealing with any kind of data collection like lists, sets, tuples, you're always gonna be using loops. So really make sure you understand the loop concept. This wraps up the lecture on loops, and I will see you in the next video.